What's up, guys? Lori Alchemist, Eric James here for ALCGC. Here for L'Oreal Professional. So I know we've got on the docket balayage, but what I figured we'd do today is have some little bit of fun. We see a lot of balayage. We have the incredible, incredibly talented Min Kim coming up to show you guys some balayage as well. So rather than do that, I'm, what can we do, right? So we're gonna do a balayage, right? We see a lot, a lot of, when I think of balayage, I think long hair, I think waves, I think lob, beach wave, but I don't see, hey, Kate Sam, a lot of bobs, right? Just straight up bobs. And this is also a great technique to learn when you need to connect a partial from the top to the bottom, right? Because as we know, with a bob haircut, we're not really going to want to go in and create a lot of light down here. It'll throw off the aesthetic to the cut. And the structure of the cut is generally what makes that bob, right? So we want to live harmonious with it. We want to work with it, not against it. The other fun thing we're going to do here, as you can see, I've portioned this out here, her fringe. We're going to do a shine line here. So now I'm sure you can see it a little bit, but that natural kind of reflect that you see right there, right on the fringe, what I want to do is we, we're going to enhance that, right? Really exaggerate it. So we are going to be working in this area here, and we're going to create a shine line. I also may carry that shine line right down the side, because as you see it, that's where it naturally fall, right? So it would continue to come down that line. But in here, this is the fun stuff, right? We're going to do a diamond to box breakdown, and it's just, it, it really, it's, it's, super organic it doesn't make uh, a lot of blocks right the bang right like that's what it is that fringe let's give it some love money piece money piece money piece but what if you can't have a money piece right like what if you rock a fringe you should be able to have some fun too right right so we're gonna get right into that um if you didn't see it yesterday the pro well the product i'm using today obviously and uh, is uh bs9 right because bs9 is the jam so I have pre-mixed my BS9, everything's all ready to go. If you missed it, I had put a video on Facebook yesterday, and I believe it's on IGTV, uh, pretty much discussing BS9, best practices, um, you know, all the good stuff about it, the ins and outs. So I'm not gonna focus too much on that here, because what I'd like to do, what up, is just go right to work, right? But hairdressers, we wanna see hair, right? Hands in hair, and let's do it. Um, but also, in the comment box, just for reference, I'm thinking about doing, again, smaller segments where it's really focused on, say, the shine line. That's all we do, right? We perfect that technique just to keep our hands, our wrists moving. You know, we're not in the salons. We're not painting as much. And, you know, we get that itch. So almost like um, exercising a little bit just, just to keep that, that muscle memory, that dexterity. So that being said, let's get into it. So I'm gonna start with the shine line because it's gonna be an open air technique. I am not going to cover it. I don't have any cotton with me or saran, just full disclosure. So you're gonna notice, I should probably clarify, this is gonna be more of a foilage, right? I'm gonna be utilizing the BS9 um, foils as well. But coming in here, we're not gonna use any coverage because what we wanna do, if we use a catalyst, this is gonna lift much too quickly. So what I want to do, and I, as you see, I've broken the fringe into two sections just so I can just get more symmetry. Let's pull this back here. If I were to put this in a foil or if I were to use some sort of catalyst like that, it would lift up too quick. The point of a shine line or something like that on that fringe is to keep it subtle, right? We just want to emulate that and, 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 and recreate it when they're not in direct light. But if we lift too high, we have to gloss down and sometimes that contrast can be too great. You really only want to be just a couple, maybe a shade, shade and a half different from your base to your shine line gloss. So for her, the gloss I'm pretty much, almost positive I'm gonna be rocking is I'm gonna use e either an L11 with a drop of D11 in Majorelle Glow. Um, but we're gonna cross that bridge, we'll get there. Let's get some paint going, huh? Sound good? Cool. Before I do anything though, Glove up here. How's everybody doing today? Good? I don't know. I'm in Boston. It's, it's crap here today. 
Oh, all right. Sorry, guys. Hey, Kim. Hey, Maria. How are ya? All right. Let's do some work. So, having the light there is a great way. If I had had my flashlight a little bit I, from my phone, I would actually kind of put it on this fringe to really exaggerate where that natural shine line is. So we're gonna kind of just, we're gonna rock with it and we're gonna go with it. So gonna grab my product and now my BS9 I have mixed again, one to one and a half. Now what I like to do, you could put a round brush under this just to keep the form and the shape, right? We're not gonna go there today, I don't have that with me. But what I am gonna do is, I'm gonna take in three parts. I'm gonna start with the center. And again, this is true by, I'm, I just want a surface paint, right? I just want a surface paint on here. And I want to kind of create an exaggerated, literally you want to kind of paint out the silhouette of what that shine line looks like. And I like to bring it back down to, for reference so I can see. Now again, this is not something dramatic. This is not something exaggerated. This is not, this is a major thing. This is that like, what does she have? Right? Like you can't pin it, but you know it looks dope, right? So that's what this is. Coming in here. All right. So also what I'd like you guys to do is, and then put it in the chat box too if you're interested in this. What I would love to do, you guys can have a good view on that. What I would love to do is do some hands-on with you guys, right? So as I'm playing with my mannequin model here I would love you to join me that class though well not class but like that session would be a little slower and we would work on just really hand technique right that hand style getting it down pat versus trying to complete a full look so now as you can see here I didn't bring it all the way down to the end all the way because we have the second part to drop down on top of that, right? If I do that, it's gonna be just too much. It's just too much again. We need that negative space, going back to that. So now, I'm gonna bring this fringe back out. Careful not to disturb the top piece. And now that her entire fringe is down, I've got a better view of what I wanna do. So if I want to carry this off to the sides, I absolutely can, right? So let's tilt her just a little bit. And I will exaggerate that for you a little bit. So I'm going to come in here, right? Just being cautious, all right? Everybody can see? Okay, and I'm running down. I'm very soft, and I'm literally, I'm balayage. It's surface paint, right? I am not trying to penetrate through, none of that. But this first piece on the fringe is very important, right? So if it makes sense as you paint it on, it's gonna make sense, right? So I always say that too. If your diffusion is a little bit off as you're painting, fix it, fix it, it's all good, just fix it. Because how it looks there is a really great indicator of how it's gonna look finished, right? Cool, back to business, never mind me. <laughs> So coming in here, and now I can see where that shine line lives. So I'm gonna follow that. Right. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that, love. Now, it's really the mids that I'm looking for, and I'm literally using the light that's reflecting off the hair to guide me as to where I should put my shine line. Now, see, I wanted to go back in and connect it there, but I hadn't seen it was already connected, right? So, this side is good. We're gonna move our little lady to the next side. And we bring her out front so you guys can see there as well. Now, just cautious not to disturb what's underneath. And we can see the BS9. Hopefully you guys can see that is already doing its job. Incredible, right? It's not even in a catalyst. No foil, no heat, no, no, nothing. Oh natural, baby. Open air. So, coming back in. 
And again, this is all about symmetry and balance, right? You don't need, you know, I have exactly this, exactly that. No. Look at it. If it looks good, it's good. If it doesn't, fix it, right? We have that power. We are good. And now is a perfect time to practice that. See, now I like this. I'm very happy with this, except for here, right? Too much negative space. We've got it here. So again, that's that symmetry. So I'm going to double back. And we're going to just pull this here. Be very cautious not to disturb it. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to glaze her out with some glow. If you guys have suggestions on what you'd like to see for the glaze, or the gloss rather, let me know. Throw in the comments, and um, I am here to serve. Coming back down, hopefully you guys can see that with that natural. It's, it's pretty much always going to be on the roll, right? It's pretty easy to find. And I'm really keeping a very heavy focus on the mids because that's where that shine line is going to live. I want to bring this fall over to see where we are. Now, this space here, if I left that, that might create too much negative space and throw off the entire look. So, I'm going to go a little heavier right, right there. And it's wild, too. I know it might seem silly, you know, just this little bit right here, but, you know, we all know placement is everything. And if you got it in the right spot, you can do magic with five foils, you know? Dropping that in. And our shine lining is complete. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to start connecting everything. Why, well, you guys? Now, what I like to do is at the top here, I've created... It's almost a diamond, all right? But because we took away the, the fringe in this portion, it's not, you know, obviously it's not a true diamond. So let me break her down a little bit. So hopefully you can see that parting. Oh, on my hair. I don't know about I probably I'll fall out. <laughs> I did though before, right? Because all I did, oh my, Mwah. how are you, my brother? Right, so right now we've got that, I would say reverse triangle kicked out. I'm gonna pull my points off now. And so what I like to call these initial points are anchors. Mize, my man. And the reason I call them anchors is because they're going to end up being large portions of light, right? So now, this, our model here offers two creative uh, avenues for me. The first being is just a traditional bob and coming in and doing some creative foilage and shine lining, right? But also, let's say this was a little bit grown out. If it was a little bit grown out, then this is a great way to connect the top and the bottom, right? So what we want to look at here is taking that triangle and cutting our points off, right? KG. So coming in with that being said, this would be an anchor, right? I'm looking for an exaggerated piece. So now in the front, we went very subtle, right? And again, look at that BS9 just going to work. So this is super creative. We've got the nice shine line here. Now we're going to put in big panels. Like I said, I call these anchors, but you don't want to do these all around. The anchors are just going to bring all this beautiful light together. Now, because I have this underneath, I can't do a true kind of foilage and drop that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay my product down, then double back and secure it. So coming in, tension is always key. Coming in, I usually start right around here. I'm gonna run that up. And let's give it some nice diffusion here. Now, staying with everything, I have two options now. I can keep this balayage or I could hand paint this, meaning I could go through 
and saturate right through. But instead, because I did those shine lines, I think I would much, much rather, yeah, just not really hand paint, not be dramatic, not go really super big. Virgin color, no, JC, thank you for asking. So what is on this mannequin here is, uh, she's an Erica, and then I threw some 2.10 on her in DRHS, and just get this to stick a little bit. And um, what did I use on her? Nine volume. And so, but she's had this color for a little while, and then I glazed her over, right, one section. I used her yesterday. I glazed over just one section with um, L.10. Now, real quick, being cautious to not disturb this down here, I was able to still lay this on top here, right? Okay. Can everybody see pretty good? Everybody, uh, I need to change any angles. Anything fun for people? Coming in. We've got another anchor. Again, we're going to keep this surface paint. Yeah, I really hope you guys are down with that because I would love to do some hands-on with you guys. Right. Be mindful not to disturb. Come back through. What do you got going on here? Yeah, BS9. It just sounds. It just. It's beautiful. It slides and it adheres so so well. It's like my go-to for everything. It really is incredible. Now again, not looking for tons of lift, I'm not gonna worry about it, right? Hands on, absolutely, Martine. I would love to. Um, I'm gonna start setting that up. If, uh, if you've got a mannequin at home or something you can play with, can you just throw me a hot in the chat box real quick? And if we have enough, we, let's say, I say we set this up. Imagine. Did you ever think you'd be at, like, at home just hanging out and be like, oh, grab my mannequins. Start distant nursing. Awesome. Thank you, Aubrey. All right. Where is she? Look at <laughs> She's on a tripod. She's moving all over the place. Okay, all right. So now here, again, I really like to talk about this section right here because everybody is going to be a little bit different, right? So I want to go in. Mannequin is not going to have much of a uh, cowlick. You never know. And always go in and check that split. Check the fall. See where it's going to fall. Some people, they'll have one piece here and a lump over here. So, again, it doesn't, need, doesn't have to be piano keys, right? Like one, two, three, four. But you want the symmetry. Now, for me personally back here, I like, kind of, I like strong perimeter pieces, right? I want to see two strong pieces coming down, three, some sort of, uh, you know, visually appealing lines, right? Like, I like to see those kind of perimeter lines. So we're going to put those in instead of just making it soft, right? Gives it something to really look at and kind of a signature. And this will be that third anchor. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna look at it, right? I'm gonna see where that falls, drop it down. And maybe I will do, you know, a thin, maybe something like this. So now that I've got a section like that, when this falls, and you'll see it here, it's gonna look pretty sick. And again, I'm also considering the cut that we're working with, right? So let's take a little bit out of you. So now when that hair falls, and we're gonna see, we're, you're gonna see those lines, right? And that is going to kind of maybe spread a little bit, but not, not much. So coming in. So I'm going to 
bring our chicken back around. And now that our anchors are done, we're gonna wanna add some legs, right? Because again, we have to connect everything. We can't just have like Kelly Clarkson chunks hanging here and some soft diffusion there and then it's all over the place and it doesn't make any sense, right? So the way we're gonna do that is now we've taken apart all our points and created a square from that triangle so, or diamond, which would have been. So what we're gonna do now is we need color here and we need color here. So we're gonna recreate that diamond and this is what I mean about everything kind of falling like the petals of a flower. It's just really, really organic. And it's very hard to, you know, over blonde or over lighten in areas. Right here. Hard down. And one more. We're going to pull all four. So now, the reason I call them legs is we're going to do a little bit of weaving, right? It's going to get a little bit of leggy in here. Clocks and chunks. Oh, she's going to sue me if I keep saying her name. So, good luck. Good luck getting anything. So, back over here, there are things to consider, right? I could just follow this, right? Like a robot go, all right, square, diamond, square, diamond, blah, blah, blah. But now, what is going on right here? When I grab this piece, how does this section relate to this and this, right? So, naturally, we know it's going to be a little bit brighter to the front and heading back. So maybe, because I'm still with my fringe, maybe I'm gonna go in and continue on the shine line or do a nice heavy single. Either one, right? It's really, and this is it. This is where your artistry and the client's, you know, obviously desires come into play. So let's say we come in here. Now we know that's right in line with our shine lines, right? And that's what it's about, it's keeping everything together. So our next section here, right, as we're moving to the back, I could go a little heavier here, right? Because remember, back here, we did more of a weave and kind of tied things together. What I lift? Clocks and yeah, ah, oh, you're right, Kristen. Thank you. Good looks. Good looks. You guys are always looking out for me. I love you guys. All right. So coming in here, let's do something a little bit heavier, right? Let's go in. Now here we're good, right? So if I want to lay down just a piece of the uh, BS9 foil, just for some support, so I can really kind of get it to stick, I can do that now. Right? Or what I could do is create more of those kind of visual appealing lines. Right? So with that being said, we know I went in the back thick, very thin, very thin. So what I can do here is I can go thicker and then thin it out to the front. But what I'm going to do is I'm still going to apply my product like foilage, right? I'm not bringing anything to the root, but you see how those lines... They are, they're appealing. If, again, if it looks good, do it. If it, Honestly, if it looks good, do it. As long, well, as long as the client's cool, too. Coming in. Now, this one's going to go a little bit deeper, but I'm not super saturating, right? So when I really want to saturate something and I'm doing some real traditional hair painting, what I'm going to end up doing is I, I follow that, uh, and you guys may have heard me say it already, but it's like icing a cake, right? So when you're getting your product on there, think of icing a cake. When you ice a cake, you have enough icing on that cake that you don't see it behind it, but you don't have so much that it's just like falling off and blobs and everything else. And it just, again, right, you, how you work is how it's going to come out as well, right? So if you clean work, clean in, clean out. So let me get my chicky here. Continuing on. So now on this side, what I had done is I followed back through, went thicker, thinner, thinner. I don't have to do the same thing here. I really don't, especially what if she pots heavy, right? And if she's coming this way, hey mama, if she pots this way, that's not gonna work that way, right? So all of these things have to be considered. The landscape, what's already there, where the placement you want is, what is the natural fall? How is she gonna wear it? Hey Paul, these are the things we need to worry about, right? Instead of just going in and just machine, da, 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 da. So, 
Let's get this bad boy going. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna do this one a little bit different. <clears throat> now I am so sorry guys, I got in the zone here. Do we have some preferences? I want glow formulas. Thank you, Jamie. Let's throw me some glow formulas you would like to see this glazed over with, right? So the current base on this is 2.10 D or Chess, what I believe nine volume. Oh, no worries, Pearl. I'm not doing anything important yet, but here. Here she is. <laughs> Thank you, guys. So if you want to see a glow formula, please, if there's something you want to see, throw it up there. That would jive with this, and I'd love to get into it. I hope that's better, ladies. And coming back in. Sorry about that. This is a tough run, being a cameraman and a colorist. And <laughs> you guys make it fun, though. Now notice, again, I'm not super saturating. That's not what I'm going for. Now let's say that your client here had a ton, right? She's got just a ton going on. There's a lot of everything happening. Take bigger, bigger dropouts, right? Just take bigger sections. And that's really what it's about. It's, it's just working with what's there. All right, I wanna get nice and close for you guys on this one. So now here, this is from the other side, that continuation. So we're gonna keep running with that. But we're gonna pull a little piece out here, put that back over there. Grab here, and let's continue that shine line down the side. I'm just trying to follow more of a natural light flow that would happen. And so I pull it down. I've got a lot of tension on that hair, except when I let it go, I'm not trying to drag it into my next section, right? All right. So now what we've got here, we've got anchors, we've got legs, we've got a shine line in there. I'm going to bring this baby down. Great question. So my preference for a brush when I paint, it's um, it's definitely the, the L'Oreal Professional Balayage Brushes. They're already, I don't know if you'll be able to see on this one. Let me see. They're already diffused, right? So the ends of the brush, are there. It, it just makes diffusion so easy. Rather than having that hard line, that hard brush, all of these are, are prepared for you. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It doesn't, uh, it's got the right rigidity. Is that, is that a word? Rigidity? You know what I mean, right? It's got, it, it, it flows so nice along with the BS9. So, coming in. Da, 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 da. What did we do last? Diamonds, right? Made another diamond. Oh, wait, the brush is incredible, incredible. So now I'm gonna create that square again. Coming in here. And what it does is by following this pattern, diamond square, diamond square, it's going to bring everything to its natural fall. Now, if somebody wore a very, very heavy pot, like maybe over here, I probably wouldn't do this, right? It, would just, it just wouldn't be the right, right look for that. But at this point, I can do whatever I like, right? So I've got those big, big pieces down here of light that are gonna to connect top and bottom. I've got the legs, right, those softer weaves to kind of tie everything together and keep things looking, looking uh, up to snuff. So here it's really free range. You could do whatever you like. You could continue on. Um, <clears throat> for those who didn't see last time, right, those of you new to balayage, this is a great trick for you to learn. If you're not comfortable with painting your Vs, come in. Now I tried to do this a couple days ago, but Instagram was just not agreeable. What you do is isolate those pieces, right? So come with me over here real quick. Isolate those two pieces. So those are your perimeters. So what you can do is take those out. And now paint your perimeters, right? Paint those two lines. 
And you've already pulled these lines, right? So you've pulled these sections, so they're where you want them. They're at the right width, everything else. So now that I've got my two perimeters painted, then I can just come in, grab the rest of that section, tie it together, and just surface paint it. So an advanced technique for this is same idea, same sectioning, right? You're going to take your perimeters out. Beautiful. You're going, to paint, you're going to take your perimeters out, paint those separately, and then bring the center back in and diffuse that with everything. But what you can do is say use like a BS9 on the perimeter pieces, right? On these side pieces. And then use something softer like maybe a multi or a platinum in the center. And what that's going to end up doing for you, it's going to create very strong perimeter lines and very, very soft center, right? It, it's, you could do it with glow. You could do it with a low light. You got anything you want. But look at this section as two entities, right? You've got a perimeter and you've got an interior. They don't always have to be the same thing, right? Does not need Olaplex. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I like it. Yeah, there are plenty of safety measures in here. The Olacare Complex, all that. It's PS9. Uh, it's 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 really so innovative. I've never, you know, in all my time behind the chair, I've never worked with anything like it. It's 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 absolutely incredible, especially the super fast takeoff. So we've got that side in. We'll bring the side around. Now we'll paint this side a little different because. That's what we do, right? Hey, everybody. And that's a little thick. I like that. So, what's everybody want to see next? You want to see some base breaks, some root shadows? What, what do we want to see? Because the thing is, is I know. I'm right, with, I'm right there with you guys. I'm here. I'm home. We're all stuck. And... You know, we want we, we love our we love our career. I almost said job. We love our career. We love what we do. We love our craft, right? So we want to keep things moving, but we don't want to keep doing the same things. Root shadows. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Root shadows are huge. Base breaks. Combining the two. Now, in my video the other day, <clears throat> a little thing that I had, oh, I'm sorry, the video yesterday, something that I had noticed with. Um, <clears throat> BS9 a while ago was that BS9 is going, it's, you know, it's an oil-based developer. Whereas we have Majorelle, which is water-soluble. So when the two products meet, right, so we've got our base on, say that root shadow, and we're going to do a touch-up, some balayage. When we do that, <clears throat> what's going to happen is the oil is going to want to split through that water, right? It's not going to want to jive. It's not going to want to be friends and hang out and, you know, go on house party and face. They don't want to do that, right? It's going to cut right through it. So instead of kind of getting um, <clears throat> some warmth there in that, that, that meetup area, you're going to get cleaner lines. You know, just another thing that makes BS9 incredible. So back to the girly girl here. And I'm going to button this up. Root shadow, base breaks. Uh, we love and glow. I don't know how I can live without it at this point, to be honest with you. Now, back here, another point. We went through here. We checked to see if there are any licks, any moves, any jives, anything like that, right? Everything. I'll be there, Alexis. I'll be there. I promise you. So now back here, we're still in cowlick territory, right? So again, you know, she's not going to have much of a wave, not much of anything. Glow is the jam. But... I need to, this very much relates to this. So if I do something super, 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 super thick here, it's going to take away from what I've done here. Also, I've gone thick, thin, thin. So kind of going with the brick lay still, now I'll just reverse that and ensure that I get the coverage I need. Just make sure there's enough space in between. All right, take a little bit off of you. And if it, like looking at i mean you know what looks good right you know oh my god it's it's a glow i'll ship you guys some on the dl the uh coming back in if it looks good to you do it honestly that's exactly what i said 
coming in here. I just want to get my product to stick. Coming in. Now, you've noticed if I've taken some thicker sections, I may have put a little bit more paint on, or BS9 rather, than usual. But again, that's just with keeping up with things, right? You're going to see the difference in density. Some people, they have different density all over their head. We're just, we're constantly pivot and move, pivot and move, pivot and move, right? We've got to stay fluid. So, again, get out of that kind of thinking that you have to do one here, two here, section this, do that. Look what's there right with obviously utilizing your foundational skills and, and, and see what is aesthetically pleasing to you and, and rock with it okay so now we are getting to the top again just loosely shutting these all right and yes my handle's broken so i'm sorry for if i'm making people dizzy with my girl around here so now we're at the final two sections, right? So we squared that out, we're gonna go right back into a diamond. So as I cut this diamond out, what's gonna end up happening is we're gonna have a small section of hair right in the center. So with that, now, I mean, it's been a while, but my people can, you know, you'll know. Remember veils, right? We were rocking veils a lot back in the day. This will almost be that veil piece. So let me pull that out and show you. And now you'll see, again, right where we need color is exactly where we're going next. All right. This is what is left from that veil piece. Okay? So this piece, what we could do is we could use a different lightener. You could use a different, um, you could use a color instead. You could do some TZ lights on the way down. For TZ lights, I prefer to do it hand. Just because when I get back to the sink, I don't want to be there for eight days trying to get it out, you know. So, looking at the landscape, this bad boy's dropping here. I want a big impact piece right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize my foil technique, right? So my foil technique that I had done uh, last week on IGTV is uh, just that reverse foil. And because I have all of this processing here, if I put a foil down on that and do that, I'm gonna crush all my work and break all my diffusion. How do you address the shine placement when the fringe grows out? Great question. One of the major keys to that is don't let it lift too high. That's why you just wanna be about a half a level and stay within range of the base. So it's almost the same way you would take care and, um, and, and keep up with a shadow droop, right? So least demarcation as possible, we're gonna be safer on the way out. So, great question, thank you. Yeah, you don't wanna let it get too far away from you. So now for this impact piece, what I wanna do here, whoops, you just not look at me. This impact piece, I'm going to come in, and instead of laying it down and crushing my product, I'm gonna use the reverse foil technique I had used on IGTV, right? So I run this back this way. Now mind you, what I'm doing is I'm holding this here, I'm not, pulling this past the crown. I'm not trying to disrupt anything back here. It is, I'm just pulling it straight from the head. Coming in here, product. Make sure you guys can see. And then the shine line portion, it's not gonna be for everybody. You know, some people are gonna love it. Some people are gonna be like, what are you nuts, dude? But it, I feel the more that we have in our arsenal to offer, the better off we are, right? Coming back in, gonna flip this bad boy here, bring this down, and I have not disrupted my work. Everything can continue to process. And we're moving on. What minimal lift would you said use no ammonia? Bingo. Absolutely. I would use straight platinum for this move. Um, or even uh, no. Sunkiss lightning oil, I love, but it just it does, it's too liquid, right? It wouldn't stick. We need some of that adherence. So yeah, platinum would be a great play. Minimal lift is what we're looking for. We uh, you know, you've seen it, right? Back in the day when you first started foiling or anything like that, you're bleed. Right? So now you got to bleed and you're at the sink. You're like, oh, crap. Oh my God. 
right? So you're in the sink, freaking out. So now you're like, all right, let me go get some maybe color, try to rub it on there and try to, you know. And it's never going to be because it's not filled, right? It's still going to be that little bit of hollow. So it's that same idea. You don't want to go that far. You just want a slight shift. Yeah, yeah. High lift would work too. Oh, no, no, no worries. Thank you. Um, that's what it is. Thank, no, thank you guys for sharing with me because, I mean, I wouldn't have thought of using high lift, right? So, again, thank you, right? That's why I love, I love you guys. All right. So coming back in here. So now here, I don't want as much impact, right? So I'm gonna get back to kind of weaving a little bit out. Let's bring you back here. Okay. And because I'm not putting anything on top of this, I'm going to leave. Hey guys, I'm gonna leave this, no I'm not. I was gonna leave it open air, but I'm not gonna do that because that's not how we work with BS9. Now again, I'm gonna start working a little bit lower now, right? I'm not gonna run as high. All right. Run this through. That's the most I'll fold the foil, by the way, too. It's the most I'm gonna do. Bring you right around here. And now, because I'm like a one-man show here, if I if you had asked a question and I hadn't gotten to it, I promise you I will. And if I don't, just DM me, just send it right to me. Anything, any request you wanna see, any clarification, you wanna tell me that I'm funny looking, whatever, it's all good. Kick it over, I'll get it. So, run it back. Dun, 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 dun. And now, generally speaking, this is a very, very, very fast service, right? This goes on very quickly. Um, if I wasn't flapping my gums like this, we'd have been done. Now, yes, I'm very aware that I'm sitting right on top of everything, but I'm being very cautious not to put any pressure down. I just don't want to keep missing, uh, mixing around on you guys. Okay. We've got one piece left and I am gonna throw, when she's done processing, see how like, BS9, I mean, come on, look at this. It's ridiculous. It's incredible. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, as soon as I'm done this, I'm gonna let her process, but then I am going to come back and I'm gonna make sure she is um, glazed out for you. So please throw me some glazes in there. Glow, glow, glow. Bye. So we have two sections left. We've got this one here. Whoa. <laughs> you know, when you turn your phone on, it's you. And, uh. So, here, we've got two sections left. We've got one traditional, and then we've got that kind of that veil, right? So, here, I'm going to go in, just pull some punk pieces. Grab my BS9 dedicated foil. Mm, I don't like that. Now see, like this is a great example, right? Looking at this, I don't like this, right? So rather than paint it, but not like, oh, I already pulled it, just adjust it, right? Fix it. Much happier with that. And it's funny too, like two, three strands of hair is all it takes. I mean, it'll, it'll catch your eye the right way or the wrong way. And then you're gonna have to make those adjustments. But make them, like literally, just don't go through it and make those adjustments. Right. Nice soft diffusion. And now, whoop, see what happens? So I don't have nice things. All right, last piece. I'm gonna leave you guys alone. I'm gonna bring her down a little bit. And this last piece, right? A couple of things we can do. 
You can use a different lightener, like I said. You can use a different color, anything like that. For this, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of, uh, you know what, let's do it this way. I'm gonna come in, come in, come in, come in. All right, I kind of zigzagged everything out. Do we want a natural outcome or do we want it to pop? I'm feeling shades of gray and blue on that. Exactly, silver against that gunmetal against sil that's exactly that's exactly where I want to go. Money. However, yes, the blue. Uh, yeah, totally the blue with some. I want to get some kind of silver in there too. L12 with a drop of D11, beautiful silver. 2.10, like a gram to nine grams of clear. Beautiful gunmetal. But yeah, I want something deep like that and I want something to kick right back out. It's beautiful stuff like that. So, oh, I'm excited now. So out of these two sections that I kind of zigzagged, what I'm gonna do is I'm kind of looking at the fall and I'm gonna take one from each side. This, I'm gonna bring this down a little bit. I want to give her a little bit of love right here. All right, just a little bit. And we want big, big, big pump. So now, but to go back to that question about do I want pop or natural, on her, this is a great technique to get, like, just pop, right? Like, especially on a bob, right? We're going to make a big impact, like, boom. But if somebody wanted it subtle, this would work great too. We would take, do a little bit more weaving, right? A lot more foilage and less ink is more legs. And it's a great way for, to tie in that person, except for the one, I mean, when we get back in the shops, it's gonna be crazy, right? We're gonna have roots this long and I'm not getting away with any of this. Everything's gonna be full, right? Thank God. But when everything's back to normal and you just got to do that quick reconnect, you know, top to bottom, things are grown out, your client doesn't come in as often as she should, like, like all of them. So then that's when you can make that move. And you can keep it as subtle as you want, you can make it pop as much as you want. Kind of think of it like more legs, more natural, more anchors, more pop. And so, this is our chicka doodle here. So we're going to let her process and I will be back on IG either live. Nah, I won't do live. I won't catch everybody. I'm going to be back on IG. I'm going to go through the comments. I'm going to grab your questions. I'm going to grab all of your formula suggestions. I'm a little biased to blue. I'm a little biased to blue, right? I'm with it. I'm with it. And um, I'm going to be back. And I thank you guys so much. So, so, so much. I hope everybody's healthy. I'm, I'm a dad, right? You got my kids upstairs. I hope your kids are good. I hope you're sane still because I'm, I'm on the edge right now. And uh, just be good. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you. We're going to be all right. Of course I'll do a hands-on. Absolutely. Let's do this. Next week, please send me a DM if you're interested in hands-on. I will make that class happen next week. Get your mannequins, your tools. We're going to have some fun. All right? Cool. Thanks, guys.